friends, we are trying to understand the application of electrical resistivity methods to understand the subsurface geological conditions, especially for our engineering project as well for groundwater exploration. Now we will try a simple problem how we can make use of the data we obtain from electrical resistivity method to understand the subsurface geological condition. Here is a problem now you see the data obtained by vertical electrical sounding survey using Wenner configuration we know there are Wenner and Schlumberger configuration anyone we can follow people generally prefer Wenner configuration because of the simplicity plus after once we get the data the process is also little faster and easy. So, Wenner and Schlumberger methods are there. This is the data obtained from Wenner configuration and this data obtained in a hard rock terrain. The data is listed below. Using this data, we have to compute the geoelectrical parameter by inverse slope method. What exactly do? These are the electrode spacing. We know in Wenner method, the spacing is equidistant. Yes, this, these are all A we call. Then resistance we get from that formula we know. That is, we have measured the voltage, current we know, we can calculate the R from the instrument records. Then configuration constant for 2 pi A, 2 pi into A, 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 A is known here, 2 pi into A, A, this is the value. Now, and this we can obtain from this. So, this is the data we have now using this data, how we will able to understand subsurface geological condition, we will try to understand. Now, now for Wenner configuration, we know alpha, rope alpha equal to 2 phi A to V upon I. Now, in that we have the previous, we have the A, that distance plot A along x axis and 2 phi R that is sorry that we have that we have to plot along y axis along y axis so then obtain the best fit straight line example if we plot like this like this like this and this is one point this is another this is best plot this is another but when we plot we have the, the data like this this is one best fact line, another, 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 another like this. So, we have to obtain the best fit line. And these truncations are wherever the slope change or sudden change in the resistivity, they indicate resistivity boundary. Inverse slope of the segment can be obtained to calculate the absolute resistivity for different layer, this layer, this layer, this layer, like this, like this, etc. We can. So, using this method, now we shall try. How we have done? We had the number of points like this, like this, like this, like this and like this, like this, like this, like this, we have plotted now. We have 2 phi 1 i upon 2 phi r and a along x axis and is y axis. These are the points and I got several truncation points or sudden change in the slope of the curve or and here to here is a best fit straight line curve. Now, example, if this is the curve, and this is, I used to calculate the slope. What is this? This corresponds to this A and this corresponds to the 
i upon 2 pi r okay now for this i have calculated what is this here to here this and here somewhere is 4.8 and then this is 0 0.019 this is here and here that gives 0 0.019 now use this formula a upon 1 upon 2 pi r that is nothing but 2 pi a r and that gives 36.36 .36 for this value and for this curve using this formula such values I have used it gives here for this curve like this and this is the value for this curve this is the value for this segment what I have done I have taken suppose this is the slope what is the value what is the value difference in here and what is the value here what is the value here that is a here and those values I have used a this 3 plus 2 a to pi r this is the value I got this value this this these are those values I have got from this curve now what I do now these are the values I got now now next you see first curve this is the first this is the second second third fourth means I have several here to here one type of rock here to another rock another rock another rock means geological formations I have calculated the depth what is the depth from here 0 to 2 meter this is from 2 meter to 6 point something then what is the difference you give the thick sorry yes that gives the second one is 5.1 the third one is from here to here what is the thickness of the formation here and here a correspond to thickness of a formation third layer thickness is so much that is 7.1 17.9 this is 7.1 17.0 something difference gives thickness of the third layer similarly fourth layer is beyond this much beyond 17.9 beyond 17.9 is the thickness of the third layer Oh, sorry uh, fourth layer so any layer thickness any layer thickness I can obtain I have got the thickness of the layers and it is extending from 0 to 2 meter the second layer 2 to 7.1 meter third layer 7.1 to 17.9 fourth layer 17.9 beyond those are the different depth and thickness of those beds we call infinity because we have not done perhaps a survey beyond 500 meter 100 meter 200 meter we assume this continues okay these are the resistivity values i have obtained these are the values i have obtained for those i have mentioned the resistivity value now what i do i have these these formations these formations this for yes these are the resistivity range for a different type of rock materials weathered soil hard soil partially weathered soil with moisture without water etc now those values i have obtained i compare these values with the standard values library we call i refer to library and there for different rock formations under different set of conditions values are given this value correspond to that of soil this value correspond to that of weathered rock this to semi weathered this refers to hard rock thus at depth 
if I have, now I can say 0 to 2 meter, I have a soil. This is the resistive. 2 to 7.1 meter, I have weathered. This is a weathered rock. From 7.1 to 17.9, I have semi weathered rock. And from 17.9, this is the depth, I have hard rock. Yes. See, now I am getting the different type of rocks below the ground. Friends, we shall go. Yes. Now, Schlumberger method is another one. In general, principle is the same. But uh, one or two more steps are involved here. That is, here also we get those values, we get 8, 1 upon 2 pi r, all those things we get, okay, and the resistivity values. What we do here is plot A, B, that is, in the Schlumberger method, we know these are the potential electrodes, these are the current electrodes. Correct? This is A, B. Plot along X axis and apparent resistivity on Y axis, but this is to be plotted in a double log paper. Not ordinary on a graph, a transparent graph paper, we call tracing paper. So, this is an additional problem. Now, while plotting, after this plotting on a transparent or trace paper and semi-log paper, I compare this is my data, for example, and I refer this to master curve. There are different curves. What is a master curve? Standard curves for a different type of rocks. Standard curves. Now, I match this with this. It means this scale, this scale, this scale, this scale should be of same so that easily I can match, I overlap. If this is one scale, this is another scale, problem, okay. Now this is another problem we come across while actually doing in the laboratory. Now I compare, then when I compare, I may get a curve like this and now you see these are the segments where my plot and master curves are matching. Now, use these points, fix the match points, then obtain the coordinates, obtain the coordinates, obtain the coordinates, use this to compute the resistivity. I am using only this value. In the previous case, I had this this, this, I had taken the slope, then I have calculated, no? Similarly, and using that formula. So, here I use this value to compute, to calculate the thickness of the formation and their resistivity, true resistivity. From the apparent resistivity, we are getting the true resistivity and then we get the thickness of the formation. And procedure is similar to what we have followed in a Schlumberger method. I have not tried this, means I am not bringing this problem here because of plotting itself on a tracing paper itself it takes hours together. We can practice at home, but principle and procedure is similar. One problem. This is little more laborious. Then we have to have a master curve, match curve. What is this master curve? In doing this, I have calibrated my data with respect to matching curve. What is the matching curve? Some in California University, they have done for granite, they have done for dolerite, they have done for sandstone with water, without water, age of the sandstone, all those things they have considered. Exactly is that true here in India? We may have slightly different. Therefore, matching curve somehow has some limitations, although we calibrate. But this is 
100% accurate, but not 100% I can say. Therefore, personally, depends on the individual choice. If you ask me, I prefer Venner. Okay. Then we have seismic refraction method. Seismic waves. There are two, both refraction as well as reflection method. That is, this is another method. Resistivity method is something. This is seismic refraction. And generally this method is applicable for more than a hundred no very, very precision instruments if we have. Otherwise, even 100 meter also not possible. It should be 1000 meter. Preferably, where it is more than 1000 meter, this gives a good result, seismic refraction. Therefore, in most of the civil engineering projects, we generally do not go for 100 meter depth or 1000 meter, 500 meter depth. We don't go for any foundation. And this method has a limitation. Okay. So, depth from close to the surface, people do follow. If thick soil and hard rock, then yes, thick soil cover should be 1 meter, 2 meter, difficult. Of course, up to deeper kilometer deep, this is ideal for investigation of deeper crust. Shallow seismic refraction people do follow, but it's a suitability for foundation site in civil engineering project people have tried. It has certain accuracy limitation. Okay. Now, what exactly suppose I have, see this is the point where I create a shock or some disturbance and then when the, there is a disturbance, these generally travel, these shock waves travel in all the direction. Some waves travel, they may travel like this along the boundary. If this is one rock layer, another rock layer this is a boundary. Some waves here and they reflect. If I do not have instrument, a reflected ray, I am not able to catch. Yes, if this is there, this may go. If this is there, yes, this may, I may able to catch. It means I have to have a number of recording stations. Costly? Yes. Then some rays reach this boundary and get refracted. Some rays reach this get refracted. They, at this contact, they get reflected. Once again, get refracted. Now, for this station, I have directly reflected and then refracted. Depends on the difference in the travel time. I will able to say this has come from this layer, this has come from another layer because it has taken a lot of time. Yes. Now, this is the method, but when I am creating a shock here, if I have a number of recording stations, I am able to. Similarly, some waves reach this, may as travel like this, they may not get refracted. We know total reflection like that. Now, because of this, some rays may escape, some rays, yes, I do miss if I do not have equipment like this. Some waves get like this, but they can record only like this. Then if I miss this here, I'm not able to calculate, miss this information, I may miss. What we are trying to say is, the number of recording stations should be more. And where exactly? Now I am creating my shock, some disturbances, and they reflect and they refract, and I can have control on where exactly I have to have a number of recording stations. But when earthquake occurs, it is a natural. I do not know where earthquake occurs. Now, 
to have number of recording stations are costly. What is this? This they call geophone, nothing but a recording device. Yes, we have these recording devices should able to capture reflected and refracted based on the time of their arrival. We are able to estimate the depth from which and based on the velocity of those waves, velocity corresponds to density of the rocks and then based on that density we try to understand the rocks. So this method is employed. Now here we have created the shock and a number of geophones we have recorded. We are creating, but when earthquake occurs, we do not know whether here, 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 where it occurs with respect to geophone. We do not have a control. Therefore, especially for shallow, we do have some limitation and it is costly. Friends, we have discussed some geophysical methods only not this, there are many other geophysical methods. I can depend on magnetic property of the rocks. I can depend on other properties like gravity, density of the material. Procedure is so simple. Suppose this is the ground. I am following a key bed, key bed we call marker bed. It has a definite physical magnetic property. For example, this is an iron rich rock, magnetic. I refer their property, I move here, refer their property, move here, move here, move here, move here. And the profile I get, then underlying rocks are folded, I get. How exactly they are folded? Because close to the surface here, they give one value, they are farther away, they give one value. They say, I can calibrate my equipment to detect only that particular bed irrespective of depth. As the depth varies, it records its values with corresponding depth. This is, these are some of the methods, but generally these are mostly used in mineral exploration. We are concerned with the properties of the rocks, especially for engineering projects. Let us not discuss that much. Now, what we have now in the electrical resistivity method, based on deep and strike methods, based on boreholes, we try to understand the rocks below it. Yes, whatever the criteria we have adopted so far looks wonderful, but if the rocks are deformed, then the things become more complicated. What kind of deformation we anticipate we can get in the rocks? What exactly the deformation? What may happen to the rock deform if rocks are deformed? How best I have to utilize my electrical resistivity or seismic refraction or borehole data, etc. Things become complicated, friends. Anyway, we shall try. What is a deformation? Yes, we know if I have a rock and I subject them to, if this is a deformation, it's a deformation, I apply pressure. When I apply pressure, 5 kilo bar, 10, 15, like that, when I apply pressure, and if I remove the pressure, it comes back to its normal position. There is no permanent deformation in that. It was a temporary. That deformation we call elastic, correct? Elastic deformation. If beyond this, if I apply pressure, the rocks undergo some kind of changes. Even if I remove the pressure, they do not come back to their original position. We call it a plastic stage deformation. This may be plastic stage kind of deformation within this range. This is the pressure range, P, or load, whatever you call it. If I 
apply pressure much more beyond this, the rocks here fail by rupture. Basically, we have elastic, plastic and a rupture. These are all with respect to pressure and deformation I measure. Again, this is not that simple. If there is a temperature, we have seen iron bar is very brittle at a room temperature if I apply pressure. But when I heat it to red hot like and apply pressure, it yields plastic stage deformation. It means with the presence of a temperature, properties of the material change. Their plastic stage deformation may be extended. So also if the materials are at shallow depth, brittle, it means materials Composition is one, then physical, chemical, no sorry, physical and temperature condition is another. Presence of fluids often make them little soft like schistous rocks, metamorphic rocks. Therefore, I mention chemical, of course, rare. Thus, rocks yield, respond to the pressure and they undergo some kind of modification in their properties that we call a deformation. When rocks are deformed, things become little more complicated. Then we have to apply the borehole information or uh, electrical with caution. Yes. Now, just now I have mentioned elastic, When you remove pressure back, it comes back to normal and therefore nothing permanent features are recorded in the rock, means permanent. If we apply pressure, they yield and even if you remove the pressure, they do not come back. That is a kind of plastic stage deformation. Force are one, it is a kind of plastic stage deformation. What is a fold? Folds are one of the most common geological structure found in the rocks when a set of horizontal layer, if this is the rock, if I apply pressure like this, it becomes like this, correct? That is a fold. When a set of horizontal layers are subjected to compressive forces, they bend either upward or downward and this bend in rocks we call a fold. Often what happens if I have lay like this but internal if they are not affected this is not the case of the fold. We do get such features often in a sedimentary rock these are waves like features. It's also wave like feature but this wave like feature only confined to the surface not below it. This is not the fold, only this one is a fold. Here there is no deformation. Here deformation, even the layers below it are also affected. In terms of their nature, two folds may occur as a single or local bend or number, single one bend or like this, there may be a number and depends on the tectonic history of that region. We have heard plate tectonics, that is one and earthquake, force, magma intrusion, all these are a kind of forces exerted on the rocks. Rocks do show this kind of force folding. Yes, such a beautiful fold. Yes, you see, these rocks are like deformed, deformed and exceeds, they develop a cracks, rupture on the stage. Now, this is a bent. Beyond that, you see how beautiful it is. I invite your memory on this at a later stage example, later stage. Carefully remember, okay, we may forget. When the rocks are folded, here is a tensional force and because of this, a tensional cracks are developed. Yes, this is. Now, you see, this is one. But you find something has happened, some discontinuity 
as if this is not continued, it is continued. Somewhat like this, some kind of disturbance as we have, when the compression exceeds, they develop the crack, they develop the crack, but here what happened along that fracture, they also moved relative to each other. This do happen, means these are all deformations and these are the folds, different type of folds. Now this is another type of folds you see, so acute again you have the fracture system. When X seeds, now you find only here and there small cracks, these are all filled by material, otherwise this. See, this is acute, again there is a huge crack. It means when beds are folded, if compressive force exceeds, they may develop a fracture, otherwise not necessary that they have to develop fracture, depends on the degree of compressive force applied on them. Yes, we want to study the force in detail. So when beds are folded like this, different type and this part of the fold, this part of the fold we call limb of the fold, they have called a limb and this also limb and this part of the fold is called hinge, maximum curvature we have, hinge when you bend and a, this is the part in three dimensional, this is the axis of the fold in a three dimension if I have, sorry, if this is a layer folded, if this is the plane which divide the fold into two. This is an imaginary plane which divides the folds into two equal part and that plane is called axial plane. This axial plane intersect with the folder bed here a line like imaginary line. Again, you do not find them on the field. Very rarely you find cracks along that. Okay. That is called axis of the fold. This is the axial plane, axis of the fold, hinge region, limb, limb. So these are all. And these are different types of. Now we can classify based on a different base or on this whether folds are symmetrical, asymmetrical, upward, downward bend, etc. So these, we try to classify the folds, we have the purpose. Purpose means depends, if somebody says it is very close to the fold, I should able to understand what is the condition there. It is a very open fold. I say yes, it is not severely deformed like that. So people say anticline. When I say anticline, when I say sink line, yes, this is a compress, this is tensional force, rocks are weak, they may develop a crack like, this is a compressive force, a compressive force, rocks may be compacted, may be hard, but extreme compaction, there may develop cracks. Yes, when people say it is anticline or a syncline, open, like that I am able to understand sitting in the laboratory. I am a design engineer or someone, I am sitting in the laboratory in the field observation, say, come, they say, yes, the beds are folded, this kind of fold. What do I infer? Yes, based on that, I have to take care of my design of the structure. Therefore, I need to classify and different types of classifications are tried, symmetrical, uh, upward or downward, occurrence of plunge. What do you mean by plunge? For example, here beds, this is the axis of the fold, remains horizontal throughout. 
but here in this case axis is inclined it has some angle this is called a plunge so people also use a plunge of the fold uniformity of bed thickness where the beds are like this thickness here 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 lake or beds are very thick and very thin here very thick here like this thickness of the beds people do refer behavior of the fold pattern with the depth whether they change with the depth different people have different method of classification now we start with anticline and syncline what is anticline beds are arched up here they are arched down again arched up so this part is called anticline this part is called syncline anti means opposite inclination this side this side syncline means together they slope together now when beds are folded into like this see resulting fold is called anticline this one this fold is convex upward if number of layers are there older rocks are inside if it is eroded what happens friends careful listen is if beds are originally like this like this beds were originally this is oldest this is intermediate this is young suppose beds are fold eroded like this then what do i get what do i get i get the older rocks are here intermediate rocks are on either side youngest rocks are still farther means if i have older rocks then intermediate rocks either side like this yes so oldest rocks are here intermediate rocks are here younger rocks are here this is the ground condition now you see now such a situation also arises now if this is the older one yes this is i can say this was originally this kind of a fold but this is not strictly always that simple example often so happens that if this is the kind this appears like this if it is eroded if rocks are eroded then we get what happens this is the ground condition sorry see rocks are sloping like this sloping like this what is our inference are they like this we may interpret but they were like this somewhere like this so it is not that easy sorry it is not that easy to infer therefore we have to be very careful naturally such folds the older beds occur inside that is important i should able to understand whether it is old or young depends on their hardness compaction age etc so in case of anticline beds slope away from each other away from each other opposite direction with reference to its axis or axial plane but when the anticline is refolded the character become if this is anticline again the thing things become complicated we need to understand them carefully okay now just now we have said said what is the syncline 
beds are sloping towards limbs are sloping towards center it is arched downward if layers of rocks are sloping away from each other and arched upward it is anticline and syncline this is the older rock this is a younger rock like this but when this is eroded you have the younger rocks inside there it was older rocks inside older rock such kind of features develop especially when terrain is eroded we have to be very careful and this is this and here it is refolded like this maybe syncline is refolded maybe anticline can be refolded wherever complicated situation arises we do not have in control syncline is just opposite to anticline okay beds like this that is arch away from there is slope towards each other is a syncline this fold is convex downward in this the younger beds occur toward the concave side this is the concave side younger rocks are there in a simple type of syncline it limbs dip towards each other the beds dip towards each other with reference to the axial plane this is syncline yes this is just now i have showed symmetrical if i can divide the fold into two equal part now this part of the fold if you see this part and this part they are mirror image of if i divide this part and this part looks similar like mirror image of other they are symmetrical when the axial plane divide the fold into two equal halves such a way that one half is the mirror image then this fold is called symmetrical but not necessary everywhere so they may become asymmetrical if that is, if this is not the case so if the compressive forces are equal then we have this one if they are unequal then folds are not symmetrical they can become asymmetrical i am getting some idea about the how the force came whether they are equal from both the direction or a different plunging plunge of a fold has already been described just now i have said inclination of the fold axis to the horizontal that is this is this inclination then this kind of fold is called plunging fold so then based on this whether the axis of the fold is inclined or horizontal if this is the case that is axis is horizontal non plunging axis of the fold is inclined plunging plunging syncline plunging syncline plunging anticline we can classify the folds this has again another significance especially in the eroded terrain we have to arrive what kind of fold it is in geological map when strike lines are drawn both the limbs for a non plunging fold they will be parallel if i have a map in the map if i draw the strike and dip strike and dip strike and dip they are parallel to each other this is the case of a non plunging fold if i have a map like this if i have the strike direction 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 this is not the case of plunging fold longer direction correspond to strike this refers to di uh, dip direction therefore whenever rule thumb rule whenever strike lines are at an angle it represents this kind of fold so syncline or anticline depends in geological maps just now we have said so this is important therefore map features yes i have to describe the now folds i have just now shown 
This is the oldest rock, younger rock, younger rock. This is the axial plane, axis of the fold, youngest rock. These are the features just now we have shown. Now this we use henceforth for further classification. What is the plunging fold you see? Plunging and non-plunging, these are all plunging. These are not plunging. The axis is parallel to each other like this, like this. So we have a different type of a folds. Now people do classify open and closer fold. What is the open fold? This is open fold. Like this, thickness of the beds is nearly similar throughout. If the thickness of the beds vary, then it is not the case that has some flow of material has taken place, then it is flow fold. So also called Closer fold, this is an open fold. Example, this is the rock you see. See, this is asymmetrical. If axis is like this, but thickness of the layer is throughout similar. What is the importance of this is that, now you can see, there was some kind of material eroded this material did not undergo erosion, they remained. It means when beds are folded, there is a possibility if these layers are folded, there is a possibility that some kind of gaps may find in between or material become loose, chemical action may focus there, they may erode. Sometimes this can be eroded, this remains, depends on the local chemical environment. Therefore, people carefully observe such features, this have engineering application, especially in the larger project. Now you see, I have shown this here, the seam, this was inside, that material is still present, it did not undergo erosion. This was the part exposed to atmosphere and this was the part inside, like this was toward the wall side, not exposed. It means the rock composed of different type of material which have different response to weathering process. In addition, they have undergone this kind of deformation. Now, such features become complicated in the field. So, these are open and closed fold. Yes, just now you see. This is an overturned fold. What, what do I mean overturned fold? Suppose this is the layer ground. These are the layer of rocks. If I compress, it should be like this. If I further compress, this can be like this. If I further compress, this can be like this. It means originally they were like this. They have rotated by some 45-50 degree. They have rotated by more than 90 degree, more than 90 degree. When one of the limb is rotated, moved from its normal position, then we call it overturned. In this case, if this is the ground, these layers are not overturned, only these layers they should have been like this, but they have turned, 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 overturned. It means from pressure from this side is normal, whereas pressure from this side is so high, they have bent, bent and overturned. It means I get some idea about the pressure distribution, therefore was not uniform. Hence, rocks properties are not uniform throughout. They have undergone more deformation, less deformation. You can see rocks are broken here, here, but they are not to that extent broken here. It means different parts of the rocks, if subjected to different degree of compression, they undergo this kind of deformation. And I can just looking into the nature of the structure, I guess. And accordingly, I take precautions. So, this is the kind of overturned fold. 
limb of the foot is rotated by more than 90 degree more than this should have been a 90 degree but they are more than 90 degree they are rotated and this suggests a high degree of compression from one side moderate pressure from another side now this is another case now you see originally beds were like this they are totally like this so much compression this layer remained the same see like this now this kind of structure we do find they confuse us in the field this is the axial plane if we fold now you see they have undergone different degree of a deformation but not rotated by more than 90 degrees they still and this angle is this may be just 45 this may be 60 70 degree like that this is asymmetrical but not overturned but this is we can say beginning initial stage of deformation or if pressure continued this may develop that kind who knows it means unequal deformation pressure distribution and therefore we have different type of features here this is asymmetrical fold now generally when beds are folded we have the round or curved axial region often it happens the edges are so sharp angular angular such kind of folds are called chevron fold chevron fold usually they are rounded smooth curved not rounded curved but often they are so sharp edges especially iron and quartz silica rich rich rocks they do show sometimes some metamorphic rocks they show this kind of a fold where uniform composition they do not exhibit here iron is there silica is there alternate layer and this kind of fold because both the layers of rocks are equally sensitive now is this is another isoclinal iso incline if this is the ground rocks are like this they have equal inclination these or rocks may have equal inclination like this both the limbs are sloping in the same direction with equal angle both the limbs have equal this is overturned this is overturned okay one limb is overturned another limb is a normal but both the limbs have equal in the same direction i so means equal in their direction not angle so both the limbs have but when the terrain is eroded i find these are of similar angle then i get confused whether it is folds or it was folded like this then this is possible correct this may be folded like this or this may be folded like this in a eroded terrain they give confusion therefore they show equal inclination i may misled by their pattern but i have to study the hardness of the rocks older rocks younger rocks relationship then i will able to say whether these rocks are like this if this is older if this is younger this is the case of the fold therefore especially in a eroded terrain such complicated situations arises i classify the folds based on this i guess what has happened if my field engineer some come and say sir there is a isoclinal fold i doubt his observations whatever his observation is not adequate for me to design it means beds may be like this or beds may be like this if this is the case tensional force if this is the case of compressive force etc like this therefore i have to be careful in a tensional force pulled apart 
grains move over and they have low load bearing capacity. When beds are compressed, they have a higher load bearing capacity, therefore that is possible. Therefore, I have to. Therefore, in such area, we personally visit whether rock inside are older or this one is old, this one is old, which is young and old. That relationship helps me to understand what exactly is the nature of the fault. Sometimes a dry force occur, that is when a layer of a rock, layer of rock, layer of rock, layer of rock, if this rock layer is soft enough, these are hard enough to forces like this, then only this layer shows drag effect, whereas these are very hard, competent and incompetent. Competent layers are here, competent layers are here, incompetent layers in between, they get affected. One layer is affected, another layer is not affected. It means there is a difference in strength of the rocks plus a kind of force is this one, shear like force. Then such kind of structures develop. So they provide me an insight for how exactly folds are formed. There are several ways by a fold can be formed. It can take place by different ways of accommodating the stress. When force is applied, how they respond to the stress or force? How do they accommodate? And sometimes if a pressure is applied, they slip. Slip is one or shear is one way. That is in another kind of folding, folds are characterized by thinning and thickening. Very thick and very thin here. Very thick and thin. They respond like that. Sometimes they respond like this, equal like this. Differently, they respond depends on the composition and the kind of pressure, degree of pressure applied on the rocks. So thinning of the limbs and thickening here is also possible. This step is commonly in weak and incompetent rocks. This is one. Yes. Causes and effects of folding. Most of the important folds are due to tectonic causes. What do you mean by tectonic? When a mountain is forming, then there is a pressure developed from either side, compressive force. Yes, like Himalayan mountain system. We know to when two plates come and collide, plate tectonics we say, and rocks above them, if there is a layer of rocks, they can be get affected by compressive force. Plate tectonics is one, earthquake is another, these are all tectonic only. Force of minor are due to non-tectonic causes. Like example, if this is a mountain area, I have a rocks like this, continuous flow of material here, the terminal part may bend here. And here also they bend, especially the soft rocks. Here also beds are folded. But if you go deeper, they are not affected. These are non-tectonic. So, force can be of tectonic and non-tectonic origin. Mainly the compressive and shear type of tectonic forces are responsible for folding, especially of a larger magnitude, depth involved, variety of rocks are involved. Of an igneous intrusion, if this is the country, means local rock, is the local rock, and if a huge quantity of lava is coming, it has to make space for it, therefore it pushes the rocks on either side. So rocks on either side, maybe it may push them up, rocks are bulged like possible, or they exert pressure on these and cut the rocks like this first and then magma still come, they push them and magma still come, they push them and therefore these rocks get folded. There are two ways. 
one is magma makes space for themselves by pushing them this kind of fold or they cut but exert pressure continuously and exert pressure on either side which are subjected to compression. Non-tectonic, even a landslide, just now I have mentioned, this is the one creeping differential compaction. So, we have, this is the ground, we have the different rocks, then due to some reason there is a load is high, due to some reason load is not there. When subjected to load, they may be like this, they may be like this, this is effect of a comp uh, loading, compaction effect. And glaciation, when huge mass of ice moves on the rock surface, stress pressure developed, they are also responsible, but this kind of force coming from the top, not from the depth, these are not called, not called tectonic, they are non-tectonic. Although these are minor in terms of frequency and magnitude, but they do occur locally and we have to be very careful what is the effect of that. Yes, friends. We have so far discussed about the folds which are beyond elastic plastic stage deformation. Now, folds do influence our engineering structure, how exactly they affect, we shall discuss when we discuss about the engineer structure itself. Now, just we are trying to understand what are the possible ways of deformation, type of deformation. Now friends, this is a satellite image. If you carefully observe this, this satellite image, what happens? Just you see, I find the river course is abnormally straight here. How it can be possible? Again, there is a sudden change. Again, nearly straight line like. In this stretch, again straight line like. They have sudden change, straight line like, sudden change, straight line sudden change, again sudden change, wherever there is a sudden change in the path of a river followed by, not just a change, followed by there is a straight path, then clear indication of a fault. What do you mean by fault? Not your fault, it is my fault, it is his fault, we say. What is fault? It is something mistake something went wrong, that we call fault, okay? This is one. So, okay, I have to discuss the engineering consideration of the folds, okay? These just now I have mentioned, we discuss them there itself. Such a wonderful, have you seen such kind of features of friends? Railway track, bend, bend like this. I have never seen. I don't know how this is. Why this has happened? Friends, shall we explore it further? Yes, we shall think about a minute and how this could be possible. Friends, we shall explore what exactly this is and how it is. Thank you.